And there we go. Excellent. We are online, waiting to see if we can get some more people. I'm very, very excited about this. We've got new character. We've got revamps in several different areas of this game. We've got a whole bunch of stuff going on. Uh, so in the meantime right now, I'll just, uh, like I said, wait for a little bit uh, to, to really get started. Uh, but first, uh, before that even, I'll say I do apologize for the way that I sound right now. I've got a really, really bad sinus infection again, uh, so it's uh, rather unpleasant. Um, but my dog is here to help me, so that's always nice. Uh, we'll just uh, wait a couple more minutes, and then I'm going to head right into the um, the testing room, the uh, the shield uh, testing room to uh, mess around with Winter Soldier a little bit. Uh, he's been on the test center on and off for the last week or so, and there have been uh, several different iterations of him. This is obviously just the latest iteration uh, that we've got right now. And the thing is, it's actually pretty cool, and I, I like that essentially the developers are trying to... Uh, make it easier and easier uh, to play as him and to make the skills rotations a lot easier. Uh, there are also some very exciting changes to Captain America as well, in addition to uh, the challenge, uh, a couple of the challenges, namely Mid uh, Midtown. Uh, so with that, I'll go ahead and hop in uh, to the training room and uh, get started uh, looking at some of the trees. And also, I'm very excited because I have my Captain America glass, so it's very important and very exciting because that means that we've got Captain America on deck next. Ah, uh, sweet electrolytes. I love it. So for those of you who don't know, uh, Winter Soldier is designed, at least in this game and also in the in the comics, as a uh, really... I mean, he, he is defined as a soldier. I mean, he is the Winter Soldier. Uh, so he's got really solid melee as well as ranged attacks. In addition, uh, one of his big biggest attributes is his, uh, his left arm there, which is a bionic arm. And uh, it's, it lets him do all sorts of crazy stuff. Uh, he has a mechanic that's similar to a lot of other heroes. In uh, in his case, he's got the enhanced arsenal and the, and the bionic combat. And what those two do is the, those are stances very similar to uh, uh, people like uh, Nightcrawler and Wolverine. And uh, the – well, they're, they're not there anymore, but uh, Captain America shouts what they used to be, uh, cable shields, all that kind of stuff. They're toggles. Uh, that you can turn on and off that affect uh, the way the hero plays. And in this case, the idea uh, with Enhanced Arsenal is just what it says here, uh, where the idea is that you use weapons and ordnance, You use explosives and bullets, essentially. So the thing is that a lot of uh, the powers for Winter Soldier will say that it has a specific effect when you have either Enhanced Arsenal on or Bionic Combat on. So you can see uh, you've got the Living Weapon tree in the middle, and then the Brutal Combatant is where most of the Bionic stuff is, and then the Firearms is obviously where most of the things for Enhanced Arsenal are. But either way, um, you you also get uh, additional damage rating for your Firearms uh, whenever you hit with uh, the, the Brutal uh, Combatant power, which are these over here. And then uh, you also get overall uh, Spirit cost reduction as well which is very nice plus the uh, the endurance buff which is very good to have certainly and again bionic combat exact same thing but primary the primary difference is just that you're looking at the brutal combatant tree primarily because that's where a lot of the bionics powers are uh, but again, you have very similar things where, again, you have the trade-off of getting uh, additional damage rating when you use a firearms power, and then also uh, you get damage negation, which is pretty amazing. That's actually quite incredible, as well as getting the uh, the standard uh, the power, in this case, as opposed to endurance. So it's, it's really interesting, and not only is he a hybrid hero, but he is actually very well suited to builds that make him a hybrid because of the way his two stances work, especially in terms of uh, if you have one on and you use powers from the others, then that means that uh, you'll have additional damage. And on, on the note of damage... You can see uh, the vast majority of his powers are physical. I think a couple of them might be energy, but I think they're pretty much all physical as far as I can remember. Uh, yeah, physical, 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 yada, yada, yada. 
And obviously I'm going to go through each one of these uh, so that you can see what it looks like, what it does, all that good stuff. And I'll just go uh, in the order of the trees here. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, put the Enhanced Arsenal and the Bionic Combatant up uh, so that we'll be able to see each of those individually. So we'll start with uh, just the, the basic firearm uh, tree here. So we'll start off with, uh, we've got the, the Glock 19 and the Suppressing Fire, and then we've got the Scorpion, which is very exciting. The, uh, the cooldown was re reduced a lot uh, for that, which is really cool. Uh, and then the uh, the Relentless Pursuit is uh, simply his version of the crowd control break, but it also has a really, really good passive effect as well. Uh, it doesn't scale exceedingly well, but I mean, it's it scales reasonably well, and it's one of very few passives uh, that he's got. So, you know, can't really do a whole lot. Uh, he does have a decent number of stealth abilities, but he's using them a lot less than he was, which is pretty pretty exciting because that was one of the big issues that a lot of people had uh, with his rotation is a lot of his powers did additional damage when coming out of stealth uh, uh, similar to the way Psylocke works but the problem is you kept having to re-stealth constantly in order to get this additional damage so a lot of the powers were increased. Alright, so we're going to start off with the uh, the Glock 19 which is just your basic ranged attack and that's also a uh, spirit restorer so just pew pew pew. Uh, very, very basic, very pew pew. Uh, the suppressing fire is uh, where you have uh, just sort of, it's just similar to the, the Glock 19, but you've got an area of effect, and it also does uh, damage per second, which is kind of nice. It's, uh, it's sort of reminiscent of, um, uh, what's his name? Now I can't remember. Uh, Punisher. I was just playing as him earlier, uh, where one of his abilities is sort of the sweeping motion with, I think it's an M60 in his case. Uh, but either way, uh, the Scorpion, uh, really cool. This is just the, the really major burst. And you can see here that um, the enhanced arsenal effects uh, effect is that the bullets pierce through the enemies, and the bionics effect is the base damage is uh, up by 40% if you have a target that's close by. So you can see that is pretty ridiculous. Massive burst. I'll turn on the enhanced arsenal so now it should be able to go through. See that? Just an awesome, awesome ability. Extremely powerful, great usability, and not only that, but with the with the enhancement, <coughs> even more, naturally. Oh, so I have to shut this off first, uh, and then I can't use it. But either way, I'll come back to that uh, to show you the other uh, bionics. Uh, three round burst, uh, this is the, uh, the basic uh, farther away, uh, one where, where you just used... Uh, use Bucky's assault rifle here. Good power, uh, uh, more damage than the suppressing fire, but obviously suppressing fire is designed for the uh, the area rather rather than just a a single target. So either way, both uh, good solid single as well as uh, multiple target damages. Uh, covert ops is your stealth move. Simple, easy. Right, uh, it's it actually lasts a decent amount of time. Obviously, I am wearing all of the uh, the DPS gear, so I've got a whole bunch of um, uh, a whole bunch of increases to a bunch all of his powers. Uh, but either way, it is it is still stealth, so uh, you uh, you break anything that you have. And uh, I'm not holding my gun anymore. That's an interesting little bug there. <laughs> uh, either way, oops, wrong button. Uh, so last but certainly not least is the Barrett. So the uh, for those of you who don't know the uh, the Barrett M82A, it's a 50 caliber sniper rifle, uh, very very powerful, and in this case just big massive damage. Slow but big massive damage, uh, and not only that but you actually get stealth if you uh, defeat an enemy. I'm gonna go into um, I'm gonna go into Midtown later on. Excuse me, so you'll be able to see some of that cool stuff there. One of the interesting things, though, with the enhanced arsenal, you do a great deal more damage. <laughs> yeah, uh, but then it has a much longer 10 second cooldown, and you can see the massive area that it covers as opposed to even three round burst, uh, which doesn't have nearly the coverage uh, that, uh, that the, the Barrett does. So we'll move on into Living Weapon, which starts with the Underslung Grenade Launcher. 
And then obviously the uh, the two arsenals, which are very important. Uh, the double time, which is his movement ability. And then the FNMK13, uh, which is uh, <laughs> essentially just a, a grenade launcher, basically. And the explosive sabotage, which is actually pretty cool. And one thing that's important for explosive sabotage is you have to be stealthed in order to use it. So you can see it's grayed out right now. But, uh, whoops, wrong button. I, I put the wrong power there. I meant to do this one. Covert Ops. There we go. So now I can use the, if I would ever push the right button, I can use, here, we'll just do it this way. Ha ha! Explosion. So essentially, that's uh, that's very reminiscent of uh, not only the movie but also uh, in the comic books. And you can see one thing is that you actually remain stealthed after you use it, so you can keep using it uh, until you uh, you are unstealthed. And I know I went out of order with that, but still, uh, it's a really good high damage area of effect, which obviously everybody needs to have. Uh, and then you actually have the uh, the quote basic grenade launcher it's not actually a basic attack but you can see it does a massive amount of damage i mean that's it's pretty ridiculous it's pretty incredible um and not only that but uh you can see they're all burning that's actually from the enhanced arsenal there uh, so it does a lot more damage that way Double time again is just the other uh, basic movement power uh which allows you to uh, to just run faster so you can see it gets that little whoosh on it. Not too, too exciting. But, you know, it can be useful. Next, the signature. Big giant grenade launcher. Boom, look at that. Like 1.2 million brutals. Very nice, very nice. Uh, the interesting thing with this is that it only has an enhanced effect with the bionics, uh, where uh, then it increases everything for brutal combat which is kind of cool. Uh, and it's it's neither a firearms nor is it a uh, bionic arm power. Uh, it's just, it just is. So, you know, uh, but it does have a very long cooldown. Incidentally, since uh, since we're here, you can see uh, there's a couple of minor changes, like the, uh, the text uh, has changed font. I don't know uh, particularly why that happened. I thought it was fine before, but that's just me. Um, you know, you can do whatever you want, though. I don't really care that much. So... <clears throat> Moving right along into the uh, the last one, the bionic shoulder check is just the basic movement power that you get, which is a uh, it's actually pretty decent, uh, and you actually get knockdown out of it, which is kind of nice. Uh, so the knife throw this this one's pretty cool. I'm excited. Bionic haymaker, dispatch, and then concealed combat. So again, this is a this is basically the other passive effect, and this one's actually really, really cool because it stealths your entire party. It stealths all of your allies as well as you, uh, which is pretty cool. I I'm pretty excited by it. Okay, so first things first, we've got the knife throw, which is just your knife throw right there. And you can see it does have a bleed effect. You can see that it's still going there. And it also goes through targets as well. Not a great deal of power, uh, but it's it's kind of nice because this is one of the ones that also has the enhanced arsenal and bionic. Uh, so you can see with the bionic arm, uh, the knife goes twice as fast through the air. And with the, uh, the enhanced arsenal, the one that I'm using right now, uh, does more bleed damage, essentially. Or it actually activates the bleed damage, I should say. Uh, and one cool thing is that it doesn't actually break the stealth, uh, which is very, very nice to have. Bionic Haymaker, this is just the, the target smack in the face. Um, and the enhancement for this is that it reduces the, um, the cost for it. Oh, whoops, that was the wrong button. I think, no, it wasn't. There you go. So it's kind of just basic combo move here. And you can see here we've got the electric charge, which is really, really cool. Uh, that's where the uh, the bionic surge is going to come into play. But essentially the idea is that as long as you're using the bionic arm, then you will be sort of earning points uh, towards the electric surge. Just like with a lot of heroes, like Hulk gets angry, um, and uh, Thor earns the Odin force, etc., etc., all that kind of stuff. Same thing, but I'll get to it once I'm there. Um, the enhancement is that the spirit cost is reduced, so we will not do that. 
I don't know why it doesn't let me do that. Interesting. Uh, shoot. No, I did the wrong button. I can't get rid of it now. No! There we go. We'll shut it off. And then we just gotta wait for this to come back. I hope. I'm not really certain why it's not working. Either way, either way, we got this going, got this working. We got our knife throw. It's pretty cool. I do have a point in it. There. Awesome. All right, so now we got the bionics. So now, whenever we do the, the haymaker, spirit goes down less. Not not really superbly amazing, but still. Uh, dispatch. This one's uh, this one's pretty cool. This is uh, similar to the assassin or assassinate that several heroes have. Um, and in this case, you do a, a ton of damage, and you also get the uh, stealth. Uh, but the the enhancement is that you do a lot more damage and it and it increases the cooldown, so it can be a problem potentially. So what we'll do, I'll just find it here so I know exactly which one it is. Wah! And you can see it's it's a much much bigger cooldown. Very sad. Very sad. Bye, Dougie. And you get the stealth when you defeat the enemy, just like with the other one. I apologize. All right, concealed combat. This is the area invisibility, and you can see. Um, can you see it very well? No, it doesn't show. There we go. So you saw that massive area burst effect. The area burst. Bur oh, uh, so Timmy, the um, uh, Winter Soldier. Uh, I saw. I think it was either Doomsa or Real Near said that he he will be released if not uh, tomorrow, then for sure next week. Uh, but basically, the first week of February uh, is when he's coming out. So I, I think he's pretty good. I think he's in a really good spot now, especially now that they changed all the stealth mechanics on him, because I thought those were a bit nasty at best. <clears throat> so Bionics sh Shockwave, this is actually one of my personal favorite ones. Uh, it's it's really, really cool. This is just sort of like the ground pound smash, smash, smash uh, type of damage. And uh, the really cool thing for the enhanced effect is that uh, the critical and brutal chance are massively increased and you gain a vulnerability as well. Uh, but the problem is you can only use it once. But it's still really cool. And you can see the little enhancement there uh, increasing the speed. How the uh, the arm sort of glows. Get out of the way, little column. So you can see his arm glows, uh, throwing the knives since the uh, since the bionic combat is activated. Just looks kind of cool. I really like it. All right. Last but not least, bionic surge. Uh, one thing is that uh, for Bionic Surge and uh, with Winter Soldier, inside of his cybernetic arm he has an EMP, and essentially the Bionic Surge is just activating that EMP and doing a massive amount of damage. My personal question is why is this physical damage? Because it's an EMP. Um, it's not like a physical shockwave or anything, but apparently it makes sense. Uh, but either way, the uh, the enhancement for it is that the melee strikes uh, generate twice as much uh, as, as you're going because you have to uh, you have to earn up the the ability to use it essentially. So when we do use it, that's what it looks like. It's just sort of like the the big cone of uh, cone of awesomeness. And there's my stealth. So very good. I really like him. I think that um, the developers did a great job. Uh, with getting him to feel correct and uh, make him really feel like a good solid hybrid because a lot of the hybrids uh, currently in the game are I mean decent but not great if you ask me um, I think personally obviously but e either way I, I really like him part of the problem right now is that his unique items are not actually unique yet uh, so you see we've got the rifle we've got the boots we've got the bionic arm and the unique items are the boots, the bionic arm, the bodysuit, the – oh, there, see, we got the uh, the Kazar sniper rifle, uh, which is actually a named one. Uh, so I don't know if they're going to have named versions of all of those or if they're just going to leave them as that, which I, I don't think really makes that much sense. But maybe they will. Who knows? Next up, Captain America. I need my glass. Mm, I don't know if you noticed, but – 
we have the uh, the new loading thing as well for uh, when you swap heroes. Instead of having the steadily moving, instead we've got the blocks now. I don't really understand it. I I think it's weird. All right. So uh, Captain America quite a while ago actually got his 52 review, and now uh, he got a, a pretty major quality of life update uh, that now gives him the Super Soldier Serum. So this one's really cool because uh, one one thing that they did is they got rid of his shouts, which originally were uh, sort of the auras that whenever you got near allies, that's uh, that's what you did for them, and now those have all been concentrated into the uh, the passive abilities and you can see here like you've got indestructible shield uh, which is a serum power now and then torqued shield throw which is a, a serum power etc etc um, so it's kind of cool it's it's a uh, it's definitely a a new take on it I comic wise I really don't know if it makes sense I thought the whole point was the the serum was unlimited but you know whatever what do I know I, I'm not very good with this kind of stuff but either way, there are several powers that uh, basically let you uh, get your super soldier serum. Or, uh, um, and essentially, it's either blocking attacks just in general, or uh, there are specific powers that actually say you will gain, uh, gain serum. And now I don't remember offhand which ones do. I think this one does. No, it doesn't. I don't remember. There we go. Double damage at cost of four serum. Airborne assault is one of the ones that uh, that got adjusted uh, in the last um, in the last iteration of the test center here. So I can't see immediately anything that gives you the serum. There we go. Heroic charge generates one per hit. So we'll go ahead and swap that in here. That might be the best way to get it, but like I said, I, I honestly don't remember now. So you can see now I've got full serum, and now if I use Airborne Assault, for example, it spends a, a good portion of the uh, of the Super Soldier Serum to do a lot more damage. And you can see here, Serum Power Damage Increase. Brrr. The Serum Powers, again, are the ones that are tagged specifically as Serum Abilities. So you've got the Shield Throw, you've got the Indestructible Shield, which is technically a passive effect, and active if you turn it on uh, the airborne assault obviously and then a uh, several a uh, couple of these I think are but I don't remember now shield swipe whack 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 there you go shield bash uh, so it's 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 interesting I like that they gave him a, a new unique mechanic that is specific for him um, I I personally don't think it was really necessary, but my problem is that I really don't play Captain America enough uh, to really be a, a, a decent judge about it. So I would just as soon say that I'm I'm just too unfamiliar with him uh, to really say much. But uh, suffice it to say, what little I did play on the test center with him, uh, I had a lot of fun. I had fun just after the 52 review as well, though. So whether or not this is necessarily better, I would have to play around with more. But it is a, it is definitely a unique mechanic. It is definitely cool, and I like it. But I don't know if it was necessarily uh, absolutely necessary or worthwhile. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to swap back over to uh, Winter Soldier here, and I'm going to hop into Midtown because there's some very, very exciting changes there. And I can't switch. How am I in combat? All right, so there, see, boop, 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 we got the little blocks instead. You think you know me? So Yacosta's thing is uh, all bugged out to craziness. Uh, so again, there's a, there's a bunch of different changes that are happening. I'm going into Midtown right now. We've got uh, new boss waves. Hopefully I won't get bugged out. That's been a problem. Oh, yes, perfect. So we've got Mole Man, finally, at long last. Um, and oh, it's so sad. We've got um, uh, we don't have the other uh, winter anymore. I'm shocked that nobody else is Winter Soldier. But it's cool because the way that uh, some of the new bosses work is very similar, very similar to those in ICP, where they're not actually part of events, but instead they're just sort of on on their own, and they can do you know whatever. I really gotta change my stuff. <laughs> and it's Midtown Madness. Yay! 
What? No Mole Man medallion? That's like the whole point. So uh, it's it's really exciting. It's it's very nice to see the fact that we now have the um, the ability to do uh, do some of the the stuff and farm some of these bad guys that we were never really able to farm efficiently before now. Uh, so we do have um, what's his name? We do have Mole Man. We do have down here. You can see Man Ape. And uh, now we are finally able to at least relatively efficiently farm these guys. It hasn't been stated extremely clearly uh, as to whether or not they'll be um, they will drop their specific items, but I like to think they will. Uh, so we'll just have to wait and see, I guess. But who knows? Gimme. All unique. Is it good though? Trask. Hey, whoa, whoa, dude, whoa, calm down. We just defeated you. All right. So uh, it is bugged out. You can see at the top it says supervillain alert. Boss is one of three, but the problem is there is no actual supervillain group uh, in the area. So I can't really do a whole lot here. Uh, I'll just uh, I'll just mess around a little bit and uh, just have some fun. But yeah, not really much to do. Other than just demonstrate that, look, we've got Manape right here. And look, the Manape medallion. Again, though, I don't know if he's going to be uh, being uh, dropping his regular stuff. Uh, other than that, uh, the, the other stuff that's, that's different here is um, they're actually changing the way some of the, um, the starting points happen. So whenever the, the actual bad guys come into play, they'll be doing different things. Uh, similarly to... Uh, how the aim guys work. Really, now I get chest of 10 over marks. Um, similarly to how the, the bad guys with aim are doing, how they're just sort of standing around, like making a deal or whatever it is. And then if you hit them, then all the bad guys show up. You know, uh, stuff like that. Uh, we do have the side bosses, like uh, like you, you all just saw. Uh, the um, Some of the mobs are gone, which is kind of nice. I haven't noticed anything particular. Uh, that has been gone, but I haven't played enough in Test Center to really see it. Um, and obviously the big question there is whether or not it's going to affect uh, how the legendary quests work, uh, but just in general. And not only that, uh, there's a lot of changes with regard to just general performance, because that was one of the biggest issues uh, that we had in general, was uh, just lag, and just purely people not being able to uh, not being able to deal with uh, being in Midtown. That was very, very, very inappropriate and rude because they said that those were all Mega Sentinels, and they're not. They're not Mega Sentinels. But that's Midtown. I, I'm excited to see uh, uh, the changes actually get implemented. <coughs> Excuse. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, I think they're going to be good. I think they're going to be uh, interesting, and more importantly, they're going to help. That's really what uh, Midtown needed, especially in the wake of, um, what's it called, ICP. Because ICP is really, really good. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's a, a nicely, nicely done area. Uh, and this is doing a lot to, to really help that out. Uh, so let's see what else. I think that's, that's pretty much it. That's a lot of the major stuff. Uh, you may have seen online that there was an image from our second raid, which is actually Genosha. The problem is I don't think it's accessible anymore. The way that it was accessed was actually in uh, Xavier School, and you would talk to Beast, and he would take you over uh, to Genosha, or Geonosha, however you pronounce it. Um, but it doesn't seem like he's here anymore. He was... I don't know if he moved or what. I, I wandered around the whole thing. I didn't see him immediately. But uh, there were some really cool screenshots of uh, the, the second raid area. So it was very cool. And you notice we don't even have any of the regular guys here. Let me swap over to uh, somebody else who's done everything. Uh, where is my nightcrawler? Just so that we can see that. Wait. So let's see, we can go to we can go to Fort Striker, but we can't go anywhere else. And it might be a deal with the story or something. I don't know. See, I barely done anything with the story because why? 
<laughs> you should be level 60. Go get your orb. All right. The other major change is the beginning of the insignia review. Uh, for the what? Uh, for those of you who don't know, the insignias are undergoing a massive, massive overhaul, which is very, very needed. Um, a lot of the insignias are completely worthless or at best just like minor happies that really don't affect enough. So there has been a lot, lot, lot of work done to make them a lot better and uh, there there are two sides of it where you uh, you first have the uh, the yellow text which is the actual aura and um, and the actual abilities of that particular um, that particular insignia and then you also have the affixes which are the green now what uh, what the review consists of is changing both of those on a lot of the insignias um, uh, you can see here with uh, with Iceman you've got a, a whole lot of different uh, stuff going on and uh, one very important thing is that uh, several of the affixes are actually completely gone now they have been completely removed from the game simply because they were either undesirable underpowered or uh, the developers were just seeing that people didn't use them. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean they're not desirable, it just means that they weren't being utilized. Maybe it's, it's unclear what it means, maybe this, maybe that, whatever it happens to be. But either way, people weren't using them. Um, there's still a lot of affixes available and a lot of good ones at that. Uh, but the, the biggest thing is, just like with uh, some of the artifact reviews and things like that, the whole point is to make things that are undesirable desirable. So we'll have a much bigger pool from which we can build uh, characters and everything else from. And speaking of a much bigger pool to build things from, one of the other really major um, major changes is with... Um, What's it called? Uh, team up heroes. Oh, so awesome! So the for hang on one second. I need a, another drink. Woo. Uh, one of the biggest things with the team up heroes now is we do have the team up pack two available, which is very exciting. I actually purchased it. We've got um, off the top of my head, we've got Sunspot, we've got Carnage, we've got Spider Gwen, we've got Angel, we've got the Angel X Force variant. Uh, we've got the Captain America uh, variant. I can't remember his name. The guy who was Falcon, Sam something. Uh, but uh, that variant uh, as as Captain America for the team up, and then um, I can't remember. It's the uh, the woman who has the the uh, armor similar to Iron Man. I don't remember off the top of my head now. But either way. Massive, massive revamp, revamp of Team Up Heroes coming, uh, so they will become not only much, much, much more useful, but uh, they they will also become much more versatile as well. Uh, it's going, it's go The changes range from now the Team Up Heroes will essentially gain experience along. I'm going to go ahead and hop into Midtown while I talk about this. Uh, they will essentially gain experience as you uh, level them up, just like uh, with heroes do. But unlike heroes, it's actually going to be separate uh, from from the heroes themselves. So if you have the equivalent of a level 60 team up and put it on a level one hero, it doesn't mean that you have to re-level the team up again. Uh, once they're leveled, they're leveled uh, completely. Uh, but they'll they'll have power points or, or a, a some kind of effect similar to that. Oh look, black cat. Uh, so, some sort of mechanism similar to PowerPoints that, that we'll be able to spend uh, on different types of abilities ranging from still maintaining uh, the capability of passives all the way to, you know, the active variants are now actually usable and very useful uh, in numerous different combat situations. So active and passive powers, uh, not only that, but different build options, obviously. Uh, so just all sorts of crazy stuff, massive, massive changes. Uh, there are a couple of forum posts right now uh, that are uh, essentially there's some here's what we're planning, here's what here's what we're going to be doing, and then there's like an FAQ of uh, of what people have said. So you can go take a look at those, make sure that you do. It'll be awesome. Rescue, yes, thank you, Timmy. Yes, I could not remember that for the life of me. But see, I I, I had the general idea at least. 
So uh, she she's one of the other team ups in the advance pack. Um, but it's gonna it's gonna be really exciting. I'm very anxious to see how this system will work uh, because it it will mean that we'll have a lot more versatility, a lot more build options for not only heroes but also the build options just for the team ups in general. And then you can think of things like uh, guides for specific heroes. Uh, potentially, will end up with you know you can have this particular build for the hero, and then if you have this team up, use this build. If you have this team up, use this build, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, one of the things that they're going for is to make every single team up viable for every single hero, because right now a lot of the team ups are really fairly specific to who they're uh, helpful. Uh, for so, for example, Drax is only really good if you have physical attacks. Um, somebody like uh, Clea is only really good if you use mental abilities. You know, just stuff like that. And the problem is just that that can be really frustrating for players because you want to use a specific team up but can't. So this new system is going to ameliorate that entire issue. There's a ton of stuff going on. There's a lot of stuff on Test Center right now. Uh, feel free to go and have fun with it. It's very exciting. And <laughs> oh, Miss Potts has armor. Yes, obviously. <laughs> um, but other than that, those are the really major changes that are in right now. Like I said earlier, uh, a large portion of these changes are going to be, if not this week's patch, so coming tomorrow, Friday, or uh, if not tomorrow, then they're going to be uh, in next week's patch, uh, the, uh, whatever the next one is. I don't know the exact number off the top of my head now. But it's um, it's going to be a, a fairly decent ama amount, I would imagine. Um, I'm hoping at least for the Midtown, because I really want to have Midtown for a, uh, for a Midtown Madness uh, Monday stream, which would be really awesome, and uh, being able to see some of those new bosses. But uh, like I said, otherwise, that's pretty much all that's on the, uh, the test center right now. Uh, not that you can really describe it as that's all, because there is a ridiculous amount of stuff here. Uh, tons of fun. I'm very much looking forward to Winter Soldier. I'm uh, looking forward to seeing how they're, they're going to tweak him from here, hopefully give him some more survivability, hopefully uh, specify his uniques a little bit better. Uh, but other than that, uh, I'll be doing my patch video tomorrow, uh, so I hope that you tune in for that. Uh, but thank you very much for watching this one. I hope that you enjoyed it. And as always, go out, have fun, uh, find those uniques, and I will see you next time.